Hello guys, Swellfios here, and I am back with Less of Loathing, and this is actually one of the playlists I was actually looking forward to remastering. Dope. That phrase doesn't make sense because I'm actually kind of looking forward to remastering most of them. But this is one of the ones I plan to remaster. So um, yeah, we'll be starting a new game today, and yeah, should be good. So we're going to just randomize the name a bunch. Uh, let's see what we get. Oh, Roosevelt. Roosevelt ought to work. And then we'll put Zwelthaios as his first name. So, uh, yeah. That'll be good. I think we're ready to, uh, become wanted for protagonizing. So, um, yeah. I had the strangest dream. I was choosing a character class. So, I think last time we went with Snake Oiler. Uh, Snake Oilers rely on their moxie and chutzpah to tame snakes, their fearlessness to extract potent oils from those snakes, and their cleverness to manufacture and sell potions made from those oils. You've heard say- I don't know what sake is. I know there's something spelled similar to it called sake, which I think is a wine, maybe? But I, that's just not what this is. I don't think I'm boiling wine, but- Apparently, snake oilers are doing what? Really well out west since the cow. Th Ugh. So, I feel like I should mention before I continue that um, I'm still getting over that tiny uh, little, uh, probably a sinus infection in all honesty. But whatever I had in the Valentine's Day video, I'm still getting over that. So, uh, apparently, my English skills are just down to drain. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if you want to listen to a Google Translate version, it might come out, you know, more accurate. Anyways, uh, snake oilers are doing well out west since the cows came home. Everyone needs potion and hope in these dark days. Also, out west is where all the best snakes live. Let's check out the other ones. Uh, Bean Slinger, magic and cooking are inextricably intertwined in loathing, and the Bean Slinger is the mystical master of both. You've heard there's a shortage of cooks out west since the cows came home, due to most of those cooks having been brutally killed by the cows. By the way, the cows are the villains of this game, in case you're not getting that picked up. Uh, so, cow punchers. Cow punchers solve their problems with their fists, whether it's shaking them at a disagreeable feller in a disreputable saloon, or using them to punch a slightly more disagreeable feller in a slightly less reputable saloon. You've heard that cow punchers are in demand out west since the cows came home, which stands to reason, the cows aren't going to punch themselves after all. No, honestly, I don't see a lot of people use Cow Puncher, and I'm kind of interested, so let's go with that. Alright, so, your room. This weird poster appeared here one night. Goodbye, desk, comb hair. Oh, okay, that was weird. Uh, you read the spine of one of your books. May Jones and the Dark Citadel, Curse of the Ancient House, Treasure of Skeleton Ship, Occurrence at Cabot Cove, Edwin Smith and the Erie Graveyard, Jack Hardy and the Trouble at Skeleton Cellar. Oh, hey, this might, one might come in handy. Walking stupid. Goodbye, phonograph. No, wait, I need the Western music. Hey, Russell, how you doing? Caw. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. Caw, caw, caw. Feed Russell a cricket. You grab a cricket from your cricket bag and feed it to Russell. He coos in appreciatively and nuzzles your hand. Goodbye, Russell. Be good. Alright. What a mess. Stack the firewood. Nothing on the hat rack today. This hearth really puts the hearth and hearth at home. Well, I think that's the purpose of a hearth. Uh, you're gonna miss Mom's cooking. It's Mom's pie safe. It keeps all our pies safe. Stands to reason. You'll miss meals with the family. You pick up one of your brother's weird books and flip through it. An investigation of the laws of thought on which are found in the mathematical theories of logic and probabilities. Fascinating. Uh, Tractus Logico -philo Philosophicus. Um, nothing makes a lick of sense to me, apparently. I would assume it's something about, like, how triangles impact philosophy. Or whatever that word is. This, you know, self exclamatory. Uh, let's see the last one. On the application to dynamics of a general mathematical method previously applied to optics. Okay, then. It's your kid brother's toy box. Heh, <laughs> he loves stuff like this. Puzzle cube. So tidy. It's covered with all those weird diagrams and charts. Huh. Okay. Your mom smiles warmly as you approach. I'm leaving now, mom. 
We're gonna miss you, kiddo. Oh, and before you leave, I got you a present. A present? Yep, it's that book you wanted for Krembo. I know it's early, but... The one about picking locks. Oh boy. The one about desert survival. Oh boy. Or the one about bartering. Oh boy. Uh... I feel like I might actually want the one about bartering. The one about bartering? Oh boy. That's the one. Enjoy it. You got a, an item. Mind your meat. Please be careful out there. Write us a letter when you can. She hugs you. I will, Mom. Goodbye. Also, apparently, currency is meat. So, um, I guess the entire country is under siege now. So, uh, let's read this one. Uh, this book is a guide to making the most of your meat by getting the best possible deal on every, si on every single thing you buy. Dicker and skill. Okay. You read the book from cover to cover and learn, among other things, that its cover price is way too high. Nice. After you're done reading it, you use your newfound skills to pawn it off to a wide eyed rube for 60 meat. Done and done. Fiddle with it. No. Oh. Your brother already had it most of the way solved, but you figure out the last couple of moves. Hey. That's cool. And then, walking stupid. This book tells the tale of a renegade sheriff who is really, really bad at walking. Okay, then. You read the book from cover to cover and learn how to walk really stupidly. You get a perk. Stupid walking. You accidentally drop the book and then ruin it by stepping on it 30 times while you're trying to pick it up. Whoops. Okay. Howdy. Your father morosely jabs at the haystack. The hat doesn't fit you, Dad. Now I'll grow into it. It's time for me to leave. His lip quivers a little. Listen, I... I want you to have this. It's your grandmother's brass knuckles. <laughs> oh. Uh, thanks, Dad. Good... Good luck out there. Be sure to say goodbye to your mother. I did. Goodbye, Dad. I really don't want to know why my grandma had brass knuckles, but okay. Hey, a needle. Got an item. Needle in a haystack. Your brother Rufus is standing here looking nervous. He's pretty good at looking nervous. You hand him the puzzle and he starts fidgeting with it. Hey, Rufus. Time for me to head west. I still don't understand why you're leaving. He's got a point, you know. Why are you going west anyway? To help people, to seek my fortune, or to get off this stupid farm. And let's say to seek my fortune. There's just no opportunity here, kid. If I'm going to make something of myself, I got to go where I can make some meat. But it's so dangerous. 60% of the people who go west get killed within a year. And that statistic is from before the cows came home. I'll be okay. You worry about taking care of mom and dad. I'll worry about me. Okay, if you say so. I still think you'll be dead by Krimbo. Thanks for the confidence, Rufus. Okay. That was just not the dialogue, but oh well. All right. Uh, go west. Uh, and let's go through the Blurrow log again. Okay, so we hitched a ride. Uh, but I don't want to go through all those credits. Uh, you just skipped a credit sequence where your character rode a turnip cart across the Great Plains and into the sleepy town of Boring Springs. I'm sure it was spectacular. Oh, hey, Boring Springs. A turnip. A turnip. Hick. Okay, now I know you can get a little perk by just doing this for a bit, I think. Ah, there we go. Perk, mostly scabs. What does that do, actually? Ah, it would be here, wouldn't it? Yes. Plus five maximum HP. The BS Horsery. Sign on the door reads, gone drinking. Oh, that's a weird way of moving. Uh... As you walk into the saloon, the crazy-eyed guy sitting to the left of the door shrieks and waves at you to get your attention. Hey, where's your hat, Dagnabbit? Well, I... Uh, you, can't, you can't drink in here without a hat. Taint proper. He points to a take-a-hat-leave-a-hat box next to the door. You look through the hat and find a sturdy-looking Stetson. Looks like something you'd wear. Oh, sweet. You grab the hat and put it on. Thanks, uh, Pete. Thanks, Pete. He gives you a friendly, if somewhat twitchy nod. Say, feller. Yeah. Yet in West, if and you want some company, I'd be more than happy to come along. Just let me know. Well, uh, no pressure. Alright, I'll keep it in mind. Yeah, that guy seems sane. Hats. You already have a hat. What would you do with two? Put it on top of the first. You should probably leave him alone. Woman glares at you. You should probably just let her drink. You walk up to the bar and wait patiently for the bartender to notice you. While you're waiting, you see a sign taped to the back wall reading... Reward for lost mugs, 25 meat each. Bartender finally notices you. Howdy, cowboy. Howdy, barkeep. Name's Swell Thales. 
What brings you to our little backwater? Oh, the usual. I came out west to make my fortune. Not having much luck so far, though. Any work around these parts? Unfortunately, Boring Springs already has more people in it than jobs. It's more of an uh, errand town, if you catch my meaning. If you're looking for a real job, I'd recommend talking to the railroad people up by Dirtwater. Uh, Dirtwater? Dirtwater is interesting. It's far enough west that's still more or less exempt from the rule of law, but, no, but not so far west that's been burned to the ground by the damned cows. Lots of opportunity there. She pauses for a few seconds, lost in thought. Yep, if I were a younger woman, I'd probably head that way myself. Uh, railroads? The railroad? The Manifest Destiny Railroad Company, from back east. They're trying to run a line to Frisco and having a heck of a time doing so. And they're hiring? No, well, I reckon they're always hiring for one thing or another. Big company, that. Errands? You mentioned errands? Yeah, this forsaken burg is always falling apart in one way or another. The hostler's always needing help since he hurt his leg, and that no-account sheriff could certainly stand to have somebody do his job for him. Anything else? Well, I've got a goblin loose in the basement. Some cow poke into Gulch and wipe his boots off and got spores everywhere. I can probably handle a goblin. Much obliged. I'll unlock the basement door for you. Oh, and you'll need this. Weak fungicide. I'll take care of it. It's a spittoon. People spit into it. You know without even looking at it, that's absolutely disgusting. Now, the reasonable thing would be not to look at it. I'm going to look at it. Yeah, it's full of spit, regular spit, gross tobacco spit, chewing gum, and it looks like even a few teeth as well. It's disgusting, and a smell. Even from a distance, it smells horrible. I know you can get an item from this, so this is definitely well worth it. Whoops. Oh, I clicked the wrong option. We'll come back to the spit too. Z. These two are playing poker, or at least trying to. They keep looking back and forth from their hands to the how-to-play poker card that came with their deck, biting their lips and concentrating real hard. Can I play? They look at you nervously. Look, I have some meat. Let's play. You put $20 on the table and sit down before you, they can say no. One of them shuffles the cards, sloppily, and deals a new round. You get a pair of tens, plus a two, a three, and a king. But conservatively. I'll bet ten meat. They squint at their hands for a moment, and each slowly presses ten meat to the, to the middle of the table. Okay, read them and weep. You show your pair of tens, plus two, three, kings. Okay. The guy on the left has a full house, two jacks and three aces, and the gal on the right somehow got a straight flush, two through six in hearts. Uh, I win. You explain that jacks are worth nine points each, giving the guy on the left a total of 21 points, hey, one blackjack, to the gal on the right's 20, and you're 25, plus a king. They squint at the rules again, but eventually shrug and nod at you. You collect your winnings and stand up. They thank you for helping them learn to play the game. Okay. Uh, what do you say, Pete? Who, me? Well, heck, I say all kinds of things. For instance, I've been mining these mountains longer than a bald-headed bus hu bustle hustler can take a message. Uh-huh. Pete takes a swig of whiskey. See you later, Pete. Oh, yeah. Howdy, I'm Sothos. Howdy, Sothos. I'm Horace. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm the town hostler. Uh, hostler is a horse person. How's that working out for you? Oh, those horses are just flying out the door. So business is booming. Nice. No, I mean, the horses keep running away. I haven't sold one in ages. Oh. Is that why you're here drinking instead? Oh, yep. Me being here in here drinking instead of watching the horses is probably how they keep escaping. It's one of those vicious circle things. Well, I'm in need of a horse. Do you have any left? One. Kind of a boring one, but it's got four legs and a back to sit on. Come see me at the stable. I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. All right. Howdy. Good to see you again, Swathias. You tip your hat to the bartender. Who's the lady... Lady. I don't think that's just how you say lady. Yeah. Cannot speak today. Who's the lady drinking whiskey out of a beer mug? That's Susie. She's a rancher from nearby. A real tough broad. I ain't recommend you pass to her. Why is that? Lost her whole family to a cow attack recently. Got some pent up frustrations about it. I can see that. Woman glares at you. Never mind. Okay, and then. I think there is actually a way to befriend a goblin in the basement, so I probably don't want to do anything to that yet. Oh wait, I do want the spittoon item. Look into it. Look closer. Alright, you are now on your hands and knees, peering into a filth-encrusted spittoon. I don't... I don't understand what is wrong with you. Yeah, there's quite a bit wrong with me. Uh, is there something shiny at the bottom? Get it? You reach your hand towards the spittoon. Even before you touch it, you can feel the grossness in the air. Like a greasy fog enveloping the stinking brass horror. 
smells like the vomit trough at a mesquite barbecue eating contest. You hesitate. Never surrender. You plunge your hand into the awful soup. It makes it sound like glop. Your skin is burning. Your eyes start to water. Search. Your fingers make contact with something. You pull your hand out of the devil's terrain slowly, not daring to risk splashing the contents all over yourself. You appear to have gotten some kind of ring. Probably some kind of disease as well. Congratulations. Hooray. A nasty ring. I don't know what I'd do without it. Alright. A sharp. Oh, hey, there's a mug. Uh, yeah, there we go. Wanted for bird theft. Naked Mike Bernstein. Reward 20, 200 meat. Help wanted. Wanted poster artist. Applying person at Yuma's Marshal's office. Wanted. Bimmy Fricker for face thieving. 420 meat. And a sheriff. Howdy, stranger. Welcome to Boring Springs. I'm the sheriff in these parts. The what? He sighs. The sheriff, okay? Blasted sign painters. Say, you wouldn't happen to be looking for what? work, would you? Uh, depends on the work. Well, how does this grab you? There's a gang of hoodlums around here what call themselves the Fricker Gang. Last time I arrested one of them, they busted him out and took my cell door with them. It ain't, uh, well, it ain't much good without the door. And? And I need somebody tough, smart, and or slick to go fetch it back for me. Alright, I'll give it a shot. Funny you should say that, because I'm sending the deputy along with you, to keep you out of trouble. He takes a pistol out of his desk and hands it to you. Deputy pistol. Deputy, you deputized the gun? You're new in town, maybe you ain't noticed, but there ain't much to do here except drink. Here, let me write down where the Fricker Gang's hideout is for you. He makes a little note on your map. Okay, got it. I'll be back with the door. I actually all that shocked that he deputized the gun. I mean, I know a Roman emperor named a horse, uh, like, head of the senate. Trade. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trade's the game. You seriously doubt that his name is Braid. Howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Well, sir, today I am trading locks for a soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. And to the cunning skinner who brings me three rattlesnake hides, well, to that adventurous soul, I will trade a fine silver pocket watch. Um, how about some free dynamite? <laughs> sir, I must admit that you drive a hard bargain, but I find your terms acceptable. Okay, no trades right now, thanks. And Alice, get lost. Okay. Howdy. You approached a weird cactus man hybrid. He smiles at you. Howdy, cactus man. Howdy yourself. And the name's Bill. Cactus Bill. What happened to you, Bill? Well, to be art... Beyond... Bleh. Okay. Uh, yeah. English is a great language. Well, to be honest, partner, I drank too much cactus beer and it turned me into a cactus. Doc Alice warned me this would happen, but I didn't listen. That's why they call you Cactus Bill? No, that's just a coincidence. Oh, does it hurt? Does what hurt? You know, being a cactus. Oh, <laughs> no, it's actually kind of nice. The natural fermentation processes inside the cactus part of me keeps me pretty drunk most of the time. I guess it is a mite boring. Yeah, I bet. It wouldn't be so bad if I had something to read. You don't happen to have a newspaper or anything, do you? No, sorry. Well, if you happen to find one, keep me in mind. Will do, Bill. Okay. And then I think there's one more set of quests we can get from here, and then we get to go off and do quests. Don't want to roll through that. Hey, buddy, where's the bar? R right to the side of you, my guy. Alright. Yes, horsery. It's a haystack. Needle in a haystack. It's a haystack. Needle in a haystack. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? How's business? Oh, you know, every day I'm hostling. To tell you the truth, though, it's pretty terrible. All my horses keep running away. Well, except for this completely ordinary one. That's rough. Maybe I can help? Oh, God, yes. Thank you. Please. I'd go fetch them myself, except for this injury. I'll give you 300 meat each for finding them. How many are there? Three. Here, let me see your map. They pretty much always run to the, away to the same places. You draw three little pictures on your map. Orhole Mine, Boring Springs Boneyard, and Thousand Snake Gulch. Why are these places? I think they like environments that are uh, thematically appropriate. Here, when you find one, feed it some of these oats. That should send it back here. Bag of homing oats. How does that work? There's, spe there's special pigeon-infused oats. <laughs> okay, will do. See you later. Most typical horse you've ever seen. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Alright, so let's do the Fricker Gang first. Thud Fricker, the Fricker Gang's intrepid lookout, appears to be taking a nap. Uh, let's wake him up. You poke Thud with your boot. He slowly gets to his feet. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. 
That is, well, let's say he's no Rhodes Scholar if we assume that seven years from now that idiot makes sense. Feel bad about the idea of killing him. Walk away. Thud, you don't want this life. Take a hike. Okay, you're probably right. Thud stumbles off into the desert. He'll probably be fine. Honorable. How honorable? I let a man wander off where he'll probably die. Spear barrel cactus. Uh, it's a pile of random stuff that Frigger Gang stole. Find us keepers. And into the cave. Frigger Gang's hideout. Inside. One of the Frigger Gang. One of the Frigger Boys is dozing in a bathtub. Psst, can you pass the soap? He mumbles and hands you a bar of soap before sinking deeper into both tub, sleep, and tub. One of the Frigger Boys is dozing in a, in a bathtub. All right, let's tie him up. You grab a nearby length of rope and carefully tie his hands together and then to the handles of the tub. The sheriff can come collect him later. Let sleeping bandits lie. Can I eat anything in here? No. Oh. You cautiously approach the Frigger Gang. They're pretty engrossed in their poker gangs game, so it doesn't actually require that much caution. You hide behind a barrel and an eavesdrop on their conversation for a while. The one with the eye badge is quiet, but you gather that his name is Snipe and that the squirrely one is his, is his brother Wimpy. What's your play here? Uh, approach him and talk. Howdy boys, deal be in? The one without the eye patch raises an eyebrow at you. Who are you? How do you get past Thud and Soapy? What do you want? Oh, it's Bimmy. From that wanted poster. It's me, Bimmy, your brother. Squints at you. Bimmy? You ain't Bimmy. I am so Bimmy. I stole some Rube's face. Ha, you always did have a knack for face rustling. What's new, Bimmy? You gotta get out of here fast, Wimpy. The Pinkertons are on to us and they'll be here any minute. Dang, damn it. Come on, Snipe. Let's hightail it. I'll catch up with you guys later tonight. Wimpy nods. He and Snipe hurriedly pack their belongings and flee the cave. Congratulate yourself on your attentiveness, memory, and strong interpersonal skills. Alright, let's grab the door and ski daddle. Mug. Stuff they stole, and door. I don't actually know how I'm carrying that around, but... Oh well. Alright, I guess do orehole mine next. Yeah, that should be good. Some ore. Okay, there we go. Oh, and a mug. Uh, instructions of the cargo elevator. Okay, uh... Alright, we'll need this stuff. Yeah, I think we need... An unrefined meat nugget. That ought to work. Okay, we need, uh, tools first. Otherwise, we can't get anything else open. Uh... Okay, yeah, all this stuff is good. Oh, there we go. It's a toolbox, but it's locked. Pick the lock. You may as well unlock the toolbox, but the needle is ruined in the process. Most of the tools inside are rusted away to nothing, but there's a pretty nice crowbar. Okay, uh, we want a uh, plastic cap, I think. Yes, that ought to work. Uh, plastic cap. All right. This looks dangerous. At least there's no plunger hooked up to it. Okay, so we do need a plunger first. There we go. Take one. Detonation plunger. Can't get past this rubble. Alright, hook the plunger up to it. Fighting against your instincts for self-preservation, you've hooked up a plunger and strung it a fair distance away. Fantastic. This makes you nervous. Press the plunger. Oh, I forgot to hook up a plastic cap. I thought that would just stay in my inventory for some reason. Okay. Oh wait, I need to go back over there. This looks dangerous. Add a blasting cap. Alright, you succeed in putting yourself in grave danger. Fantastic! Okay. There we go. Ooh. Neat ore. Howdy. You see the dark horse. Barely. Hey, they... There, girl. It's okay. I'm a friend. Winnie. Nor shies away from you. Though in this case, it's more like cripplingly introverted away from you. Aw, oh, come on. Don't be like that. Look, I brought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that was a very comforting thing to say. Uh, pat her on the nose. As you reach out to pat her, the horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Aw, oh, come on. Dang. 
take a handful of oats out of the bag and hold them out to the horse. Here you go. Yum yum. She sidles away from you warily and makes a surprisingly good effort at hiding in her own shadow. Come on, please. Look, they're fine, see? Uh, you take a handful of, from, of oats from the bag and toss some in your mouth. Ugh, it's like the roughest, blandest breakfast cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food, don't ask. No, no, I very much want to. But, uh... You smile to show the horse that you're fine and realize that you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Geez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with, re with a cheerful wave. See, perfectly fine. Pat her on the nose. The horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pat her nose. But she doesn't actually flee, so that's something. There's a good girl. Winnie. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you, so you offer her a handful of oats. Warily, begrudgingly, she eats them. Then she gestures at something behind you. You turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn back, she's gone. Well, okay then. Alright, Thousand Snakes, Skulls is next. Ow. The snake looks sleepy, but not that sleepy. Okay, um... Yeah, this ought to do. Ow. And then we'll just shoot it for the rest of HHP. You have slain a snake. Before long, they'll call you Snake Murder and Zwothaos. What a lovely title. Another snake? Well, I guess it's not called One Snake Gulch. Eh, that's fair. Whoa, they're quick. Ow. Okay, let's, uh... Do whatever that was. Yes, this will, this will work quite nicely. Ow. And just to make sure. Yeah, that ought to work. You made short work of that long snake. Hooray. Ow. This snake looks really angry. You're gonna need every trick in the book to beat this one. Ow. Alternatively, uh, actually, it might just take two punches. Yeah, we should be fine. So, one punch. Okay, got lucky. Ow. Yeah, I don't want to waste dynamite on it, so... Yeah, there we go. Nice work. If the whole cowboy thing doesn't work out, you could always get a job as a snake exterminator. Yep. Oh, this horse has gone snake crazy. Or maybe he was some other kind of crazy before. Yeah, he looks normal. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella. I'm a friend, okay? <laughs> it's cool, alright? Be cool. Don't freak out on me. <laughs> that was just not as original as I wanted it to be. Uh, look him in the eyes. You call me look the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yard stare, and the other is revolving madly in its socket like he's trying to think. Like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little now that it's clear that you aren't actually made of spiders, though. Pat his nose. You carefully and gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit. Okay, a lot. But seems to recognize that you aren't going to eat his eyes or suck out his soul or whatever madness is bouncing around in that skull of his. That's a good boy. Are you hungry, boy? I've got a little treat for you. Snurf. You feed the crazy horse some of the homing oats and it gallops away with a whinny. Or rather, a whinny raggle. Hopefully he's headed home and not into the 12th dimension. I mean, if he goes to the 12th dimension, we success. He's going where no horse has gone before. Which would be impressive. Our founder, Zephaniah Boring, 1806 to 1885. He's actually a really interesting guy. Pretty muck here. Benjamin Crockett, 1320 through 1364. He showed up way too early. Bugard Skeleton Captain, 3rd Cavalry, 1820 through 1866. This grave is really noisy. Okay, so this would be one of the ones we need to come back if we ever get the shovel. A skeleton, you're not getting past it without a scuffle. Howdy. Okay, well that was easy. The skeleton collapses into a pile of loose bones. Cool. Who was he? This guy wouldn't just stay put. Okay, doesn't tell you. Howdy. Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky, translucent horse. 
You approach the weird semi-transparent horse cautiously, so as to not startle her, they quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there. Hi, I'm a friend, okay? Uh, that's a little strange. How do you do that without opening your mouth? Uh, you pat the horse's nose, which is c very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Yep, still cur cold. Cur. Okay, I just can't speak English. Yikes. Alright, uh, let's see if she'll eat the oats. Here you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she sort of just stares right through you. Ugh. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Try the oats again. You hold the oats out again, but the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind these bones up with. Grave dirt? Winnie. Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt. Don't know quite how sanitary that is, but oh well. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse gazes expressionless expressionlessly expressionlessly there we go at them, then eats them. Nay. And with that she glides away in the direction of the town. Okay. Bizarre. Alright, so we've Nope. And we probably don't need it. Uh, but we might. There we go. Uh, I want to use the crowbar. Yeah, there we go. Uh, oh wait, I've got the brass knuckles. Never mind. Let's get our reward from here. I don't know how you spot her hiding in that mine, but thanks for sending back my dark horse for under me. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for the help. Anytime. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He's eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. Alright, that's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra for you. 100 meat. Thanks. Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? Is that something earlier about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask how. It's embarrassing. I was gonna get Doc Alice to have a look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd you do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself up in her office. Said she wouldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. Is that an actual nurse, or... I'm pretty sure she was being sarcastic. I see. Uh, just browsing. Okay, we will get a horse when we're preparing to leave. I do know this video is getting a bit long, but... Howdy. Howdy. Good to see you again, Swathos. Tip your hat to the bartender. I found these mugs. Much obliged. You hand in the recovered mugs and collect your bounty. Thanks. Okay. And let's talk to her. Howdy, Susie. Howdy, cowboy. He's going to be searching for the spittoon for his teeth if he don't leave me in peace. Okay, then. I did not complete that uh, little side quest thing. What do you say, Pete? Who, me? Well, heck, I say all kinds of things. For instance, tarnation. There's a ghost in my bedroll. Uh-huh. Pete takes a swig of whiskey. Pete squints and points at the unrefined meat ore you're carrying. You might seem like someone with got much use for unrefined ore, stranger. I'll buy it off in you for 73 meat. Okay. Here, here you go. Give him the nugget. He chuckles and hands you some meat. You gain 73 meat. Pleasure doing business with you. See you later. Okay. Yep. Uh... So, I haven't completed her thing yet. Ah, yes. I'll need this for Cactus Bill. Oh. Nurse brand whiskey. Good for what ails you. Huh. Uh, I guess we never established your character's age. Good thing the legal drinking age here is can reach the top of the bar. Okay. So, this would be for Doc Alice, I believe. And you? Okay, yeah, I can't befriend them yet. Whoops. Alright, let's talk to the sheriff. Sheriff. Howdy. I see the Fricker Gang hasn't put a stop to your breathing. Did you rescue my cell door? You hand the sheriff his door and he hangs it back on his hinges. Nice work, stranger. This here prison cell just got about four times more secure. Are there any Fricker boys left for me to round up? Yeah, one or two that's asleep on the job. I'll go round them up shortly then. 
Looks like I owe you a reward. Oh, 400 meat. Got another little task for you if you got the time. Should be a lot simpler than the last one. What you need? Well, the frickers busted the lock when they took the door. Gonna need a new lock. I'll keep an eye out. Uh, yeah. I need to trade for a lock. Step right up, step right up. Braid's the name and trade's the game. You seriously doubt that his name is Braid. Howdy, Braid. What are you trading? Uh, locks for soap and a stick of dynamite for a needle. Okay. Soap for lock. Thank you. Alright, we should be good. Get lost. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey? Your favorite, I'm led to believe? Didn't know she made house calls. Alright, hold on. You hear a rattle, she unlocks the door. Oh. Uh, wow, shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? Yeah. Stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Not until you give me that whiskey you promised me. Oh, yeah. Doc Alice looks to be about in her 50s. Her hair is graying and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp. If a little bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey. Stat. Okay. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask she takes out of her pocket. Pocket. Yeah. Then she puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here, me or you? Okay, point taken. This vanity doesn't look like it's seen much use. Okay. There we go. Uh, hey, Doc, can I look at your books? Sure, if you want to. Not that they're going to do you much good in this doomed forsaken hellhole. You try being less cheerful, Doc. Okay, um... Ooh, goblinoid tongues, a primer. Start flipping through the goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but eventually you, you get so engrossed that by the time you take a break, break from reading, several blurfs have passed, and you also know that blurf is the goblin word for hour. You have learned to speak goblin, sort of. Uh, Legend of Curly's Meat. Uh, legendary treasure, massive chest of premium meat. Uh, Western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. Oh. <coughs> and then Life and Works of Fred Ferguson. Book reports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it, you mostly find it's just lists of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. At least there are some useful appendices in the back, and some diagrams of appendices. Hmm. Make like a tree and leaf. Uh... Okay, let's talk to her a bit. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything alright? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast, fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so... She glares at you meaning, meaningfully. So well, what's up? I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse car and you ask, what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking. Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking? You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets with half their strings cut, looking to take a bite out of the living? Oh yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to get some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my mind. But how's that even possible? It isn't possible. It goes up against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oh. Ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterwards and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough? Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients. It's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh. Um. Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention back on the bottle. Doc Alice sighs. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say that word currently because I know I'm just going to butcher that pronunciation. What now? What's the deal with all the TNT? And so when I feel like I'm about to go, I'm going to blow myself into bed. So I, so small there won't be anything left to come back. That seems drastic. Drastic? Hell, no way I'm taking the risk of, one beco of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. Okay, do you have any idea what's causing the resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor? What is it? It's when you get an incomplete 
It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. Uh. Anyway, what I heard is that there's a fella out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly he's sending magic out into the world somehow. Magic like the bean slingers use? I never heard of any bean slinger raising the dead, have you? Or skeletons? That'd be one hell of a can of beans. I would very much like that can of beans. Okay, I think we got everything from her. Howdy. Did you bring me something to read? Yup. You give him the newspaper you found in the basement of the saloon. Much obliged, partner. Now, let's see here. What can I do to return the favor? Oh, I know. My shovel. I left it behind at the outhouse at Orhole Mine. It's yours if you go and get it. I'm sure you'll find a, way, a use for it. Uh, behind the outhouse at Orhole Mine. Got it. Thanks, Bill. Don't mention it. Now, if you could just kind of stick that newspaper to my face before you leave. Okay. Now, I th think we can go to here. It's behind the outhouse. Oh, hey. Uh, shovel. Alright, and now I know there's some stuff down here. So let's just get what we didn't get the first time. Uh, oops. Ah, here we go. Ah, yes, this would be the one we dig up to fight. Howdy. Uh, let's do a bit more melee damage and punch. Ow. Okay, there we go. You put a stop to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. You got an item, old cavalry sable. Sa sabor? Sabor? I don't think that's what you call a saber. Ugh. And a gold tooth. Uh, let's actually equip this. Okay, there we go. And then we see Timothy Cotrain, devoted husband, Elizabeth Cotrain, beloved daughter, and Silas Cotrain, a baby. Okay, and now we can talk to Suze. Susan? The one rancher that has her entire family killed? Her? But first, let's go talk to the goblin. The goblin shouts, I'm Gary. Uh, hi, Gary. Hi, hi, hello, hello, I am Gary, who are you? Well, I'm Zwothaos. Hello, hello, Zwothaos, good to meet you. What's Zwothaos doing down here? Be polite. Oh, you know, I'm just looking around. Oh, hey ho, Gary likes look to looking too. Gary not looking for a way out of this dump. Gary not having much luck though. Where are you trying to go, Gary? Hi away, hi away and far up for popping. Popping and then new Gary everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Settle down, Gary. Gary doesn't like to settle in. Gary wants to traveling and popping. Is Wotheos going far up and high away and maybe taking Gary with you, eh? Eh? Think about it. Alright, we met the Canadian goblin. And you. The woman glares at you. Are you so Susie Cot Cotrain? How how do you know my last name? I saw the graves in the cemetery. Sorry for your loss. Susie scowls bitterly and mutters into her whiskey. I saw it happen. Saw the whole damn thing and couldn't do nothing about it. Bartender said it was cows? Cows, right. I don't know what those things are, but they ain't cows. Not anymore. What happened? It was a raid. See, Ma and Pa used to ranch cattle back before, well, before they came home. Pa didn't make it, but Ma and I managed to rebuild. We ranched pigs instead, and she left me the place when she passed. Go on. Well, I guess a passing herd sniffed out that it used to be a cow ranch, and they attacked a couple days ago. Happened so fast that it even have time to get my rifle out of the gun safe. Cows smashed in the front door and a fire started out back by the root cellar. House went up in blazes just like that. What'd you do? I... There wasn't anything I could do. Couldn't get upstairs to the kids because of the fire. And I saw Tim trampled right in front of me. I just... She drains her glass. I ain't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. She refills her mug from, the bottle, from a bottle on the bar and doesn't reply. What will you do now? Head west, I suppose. Nothing keeping me here, and no desire to stay. I can't leave without my rifle, though. Why not? It was Ma's rifle. It's all I got left of of anybody. Where is it? Left at a ranch like a damn fool. Listen, can I ask you a favor? I need someone to go get it for me. Yeah, I'll go get it. Alright. 
Go train ranch. And I think that's about the last thing we need to do, unless I want to go talk to him. Uh, don't. I could probably try and pronounce that later, but, uh. Uh, Pete notices the nugget of silver you found earlier. I'll take that old silver nugget off your hands if you like. Give you 81 meat for it. Sell the nugget. Okay, it's a deal. You give him the nugget. He smiles and hands you some meat. Fine and dandy. Pete's eyes narrow as the gears in his head start to click. He fixes his gaze on you, and the tick in his eyelid seems more pronounced. Listen, kid, all this stuff what I've been buying from you, you've been spending time underground, ain't ya? Well, you'll listen to old Pete's advice. You'll stay out of ore hole if you know what's good for you. There's stuff down on the 40th level that ain't worth methin with, messing with for a fella that wants to keep his eyes, if you catch my meaning. Not sure I do, but thanks. Okay, and I know that activates hard mode, so I don't want to go do that. So let's grab this. Hot train ranch. All the water's boiled away. And eat. Yeah, she wasn't kidding when she said the house burnt down. Oh. Something behind this door is making some pretty awful noises. Okay. Nothing in there. Looks like somebody was in the middle of fixing a knife. A varmint skin and knife. These pies were not safe. Huh, that'd be the cow. This thing looks angry. You're not gonna make it to that safe without dealing with it. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can just one hit kill it. Because we might be able to. Yeah, I think we can. Nope, no we can't. Never mind. Ah, oh, dang. That's a bit toasty. Okay. There we go. You defeat that nasty cow skull floating in a cloud of flame. Alrighty. Guns. It's the Katrain's family gun safe. Susie's rifle. Alrighty. It should be good. And now we can head back. Because I think... And then we gotta, you know, help the sheriff. So let's do that. We'll talk to Susie and then we'll buy a horse. And I'll end the video there. Since this one's taken a bit. Howdy. You managed to scare up a lock for myself? Yep, got one right here. Hand the sheriff the lock. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and it clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handy? I'll see what I can do. There we go. Pick the lock. Definitely pick the lock. I unlocked the cell for you. The sheriff walks into the cell and picks up the key. He looks around for a place to hide it and eventually sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. If Boring Springs ever gets any more criminals, they'd better watch out. That's a good job you done. Don't mention it. Here, have this as a souvenir of your time in Boring Springs. Replica Sherf badge. Thanks, Sherf. Okay, so Sherf is all good. Might be able to talk to Doc Alice again. What now? Uh, about that necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try and stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You, because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? A gray-haired old woman that knows as much about fighting as a squirrel knows surgery? Did you hit your head on a bar stool, kid? You aren't that old. And if I were going to pick up someone to go against the necromancer, it'd be someone who knows about death but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Or a mortician. Or a, a coroner, I think is what they call him. Doc Alice stares hard at you and takes a swig from her bottle, saying nothing. It sounds to me like you've got plenty of motivation to get the job done for your friends and, and everyone. She continues to look at you, and you can see the gears in her head turning. It beats doing nothing, anyway. Beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away, then she shakes her head slowly. You seriously expect me to we ride west out, ride out west by myself chasing a rumor? It doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west too. Tag along with me, and maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead is impossible? Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. A spark slowly brightens in her eyes. Alright, kid. What the hell? Let's give it a shot. Cool. Okay, so we've... Someone made things better for her? I think that's all the dialogue we can get out of her. And then we can finish talking to her. You find my rifle yet, stranger? Yep, here she is. Susie's eyes well up with tears as you hand her the rifle, and she roughly scrubs her sleeve across her face before any of them spill over. Thanks, stranger. I didn't catch your name. Uh, I lost my mouse. I'm Swothaos. Thanks, Swothaos. Can't rightly say what this means to me. 
She looks at the rifle for a long moment, then looks back at you, and she sighs. Well, that's enough wallowing in misery. Time for me to hit the road. If you want me to tag along when you head west, you just say the word. Sounds good, Susie. And then talk to her. Howdy. Good to see you again, Swathos. Tip your hat to the bartender. Just thought I'd say howdy. Okay. And now we buy a horse. Uh... Afternoon, sir. What can I do for you? Can you sell me a horse? Sure thing. I should warn you, though. Horses get mighty attached to their riders. Once you've bought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which ones are you interested in? Uh... I want... I'm gonna take the spooky pale one. I'll go with the spooky pale one. Good choice. That's a good horse if you like that sort of thing. I'll sell it for a thousand meat. Alright. Wait, what sort of thing? You know, spooky stuff. Spooky stuff. I don't want to get into particulars. Let's just say she sets a certain tone. Ooh, mysterious. I'll take her. Thanks. Here's the keys. Ride safe. The keys? Uh, okay. Uh... In honor of the Roman Emperor who named his horse head of the Senate, let's name her Caligula, because that's a girl name or something. Alright then, Caligula the horse. It's got a nice ring to it. Oh, and I almost forgot. Free with every horse pur purchase is a complimentary map. Southeast-West map. Thanks. Okay, and we should be able to head out now, so... Once you leave Boring Springs, you won't be able to come back. Any unfinished business you've got will forever remain unfinished. Are you sure you're ready to leave? Yes. Alright, then. You're properly horsed and ready to start your new life in the West. All you need now is a partner. Somebody to share the trail with. Somebody you can rely on for emotional and combat support. Who will you take with you? Uh, take Crazy Pete. Take Doc Alice. Take Susie Cotrain. Take Gary the Goblin. Uh... I honestly want to take Gary, the Canadian Goblin. Okay, you head back to the saloon's basement and smuggle Gary out under your coat. Hit the trail. Oh, one last thing before you go. Up until this point, I've been automatically spending your... Okay, yeah, keep spending on it. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Alright, our goblins being normal. Anyway, so this is where I'm going to end the video, so if you guys enjoyed, like and subscribe. If you didn't, comment down below, I can do better, and I will see you guys. Oh, uh, comb remain. Okay. And yeah, I'm going to end the video here. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, like and subscribe. Sorry, my English was horrible. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.